Hi, everybody. Good Thursday afternoon to you, and welcome inside the beautiful basketball arena at Lee College in Baytown, Texas. I'm Roger Smith. This is VibeFortBend.com, and Patrick Kinnick and I are going to be here to bring you the game this afternoon between the Ridgepoint Panthers and the Bryan Vikings, you know, up there in the Aggieland area. Patrick will be back with a play-by-play eventually, but first we're going to have the Next Level Urgent Care Countdown to Tip-Off show, and we'll talk with Darren Johnson, head coach of the Panthers, whose team had a great comeback win. They came from 15 points down at halftime against Spring Westfield and end up, ended up winning by five, 58 to 53. It was a very inspiring win, although he, as a coach, is a perfectionist and uh, not really happy with the way his team fell behind the way they did. But never mind, we can enjoy that as fans, and you will on VibeFortBend.com. They're getting ready to play the Bryan Vikings. We'll be right back with the Next Level Urgent Care Countdown to Tip-Off show. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for next level urgent. We're just a few minutes away from the second part of our doubleheader as the Ridge Point boys are going to be taking on the Bryan Vikings in the Lee College Invitational Tournament. I'm sure that's not the perfect official name of this tournament, but let's talk to Darren Johnson, head coach of the Panthers. And I know it's not how you drew it up, but that game that you played this morning was an excellent comeback win over Westfield. And were you pleased with it? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Uh, not pleased with how we started. Definitely pleased with how we finished. Uh, my guys, they dug in, they kept fighting, which was great. Um, Westfield's a really good team. Um, they put, they posed a lot of issues for us early on, and our guys stayed in the fight, and we made some plays down the stretch to, to pull it out. So definitely proud of the way we competed. All right. So you're taking on the Bryan Vikings, and I'm going to assume that, you know, you can't scout every team that you could potentially face in this tournament. Do you know anything about them, and are you uncomfortable going into a game if you really don't know anything about them? Uh, uncomfortable, no. Uh, you kind of get this in tournaments. Um, I know that they won this morning, and so did we, and that's who we play. Uh, so we'll, we'll figure out a little bit about them uh, when we see them and when we play, but... As far as scouting them, I haven't seen them play at all. So I'm not going to lie and say I did. But that's what tournaments are fun for us. You know, a good time to go out and see a different style, different opponents, and you get to go play. So you finish the morning game at about 11 o'clock. And this, this arena here at Lee College is really nice. Uh, very, very impressive, a nice place to play. But they don't have great restaurants in close proximity. Where did the Panthers eat lunch? Uh, we went out and had a, we sat down at Jason Deli and hung out a little bit and let our guys get off their feet. Um, they went and drank some coffee and kind of relaxed with each other and just kind of let them be kids for a little bit and, and hang out with each other, which is what these things are for. And, We'll see if it if it was a good idea or a bad idea here in a, in a few minutes. <laughs> if I had known there was a Jason's Deli, I would have gone because I like it. Uh, this this might make a difference in the game or not. The Bryan Vikings were at Whataburger. I know because I was eating at Whataburger, and if each one of them had a sweet and spicy bacon burger, you might be able to beat them down the floor. Well, I hope that was the truth. I hope they ate two if that's the case. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, but they're kids. Um, they can eat whatever they want, and that probably won't affect them at all. So we'll see in a little bit um, what, what team we get and, and if it pays off or not. All right, we look forward to uh, seeing what Ridgepoint does in the District 26A games and when we get into the year 2023. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you guys. All right, that is Darren Johnson, head coach of the Panthers. His team takes on the Bryan Vikings in just a couple of minutes, we hope, here on VipeFortBend.com. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. 
But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, Doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. All right, everybody, welcome inside Lee College's beautiful basketball arena in Baytown, Texas. I'm Roger. Just a second. Hold on, Patrick. Hold on. It is loud in here. Okay, go ahead. Now we got you. Ridge Point starters, Darian Hayes, Chauncey Shaw, TJ Ford Jr., James Farr, and Logan Menifee. Those are your Panther starters. You can probably hear in the background, they're announcing the Brian starting lineup and the big guy, Chris Maxey, is the last guy being announced. He looks like he's a offensive tackle. By the way, defensive end or something. Now, now he takes up a lot of space, but frankly, the Brian team does not take up a lot of space because, Patrick, I don't think I see more than eight players who are suited up and available. I counted eight several mm -hmm. times. I was trying to figure out if... I miscounted. Apparently, they have a few guys who are not here the, this afternoon due to the holidays or something. They got 12 on the roster that I have on my list here, but only eight showing up here. So for Ridgepoint, normally I think they would have in the starting lineup a big fella named Cole Veyon, who played tight end on the football team. He is not available. However, uh, they had a great... Uh, I guess uh, understudy and Donovan Thomas, who wore the number 15 jersey and helped them get the win this morning. Here's the opening tip. And the Bryan Vikings come out there with it. They're wearing a uh, light blue uniform. Morning. And there's a foul called against Far Against Far of the Ridgepoint Panthers, who have yet to score. Off By the way, I, slow start. I met James Farr's parents prior to the game, and Might they are going to listen to the podcast on VitefortBend.com. Very good. Gooden swings it off to the left side. Long jumper from Walker. Brackets no good, and a whistle and a foul on number 24. Was it 25? Maxi. He's the big guy. They don't want to get him into foul trouble, I wouldn't imagine. He looks like maybe the greatest Brian Viking of all time. He has. That being Ty Warren, who played for the Aggies and was an All-American, won Super Bowl rings for the Patriots. It's a pass inside. Menifee has it, swings it out to the right side, driving a baseline, tried to get it back to Menifee, but it was deflected, and now down court comes Gooden. He ends up on his Backside. On his backside, backside, and he tried to dribble with it, and then it was tipped out of bounds off of the Panthers. We played about three minutes here in the first quarter, and so far the Vikings have dented the scoreboard. Panthers still with a donut. Five nothing. Here comes the inbound from the corner. Pass it inside to uh, Walker, right side, way out. Looking for a pick from Maxi. Gets it. Pick and roll, nothing doing. And now Maxi posts up down low. You don't want to get him down there too often if you're the Panthers. And he had a point blank layup that he missed. But there's a foul on Menifee. Now Menifee picked up fouls quickly in the first game this morning. He barely played in the first half. I think he had two or three fouls early. And he was kind of playing sparingly throughout the day. Here's the free throw attempt off the front iron from Maxi. By the way, it may say how, I mean, this is the first time I've ever seen him play at the varsity level today, but 
that may indicate Logan Menifee's value if when he was in there, they pretty much fell behind by 15. And when he played more in the second half, they yep. ended up winning by five. He had a, a positive impact in the game. And uh, Maxie makes the second free throw, and it's 6 nothing. Uh, Vikings on top of the Panthers, who have the ball in the court, up front court now. And T.J. Ford looking for a shot, decides not to. Swing it around to Hayes. Shaw now. Back to Ford. Free throw line is Hayes now. Looking for a shot. Good defense. There's TJ Ford with a long three, and it's short. Rebound comes down to TJ Johnson of the Vikings. Here comes CJ Ellis. Maxi goes baseline. Has to swing it around. Now it's to Johnson again. Another three. TJ Johnson. Mayday, mayday. He's got two threes and a two. He's got eight points of the nine for the Vikings, and it's 9 nothing. Brian. And now Shaw, right side, still dribbling. Now he's lost his dribble. Looks for Ford, left side. Looking down low to Menifee, but he decides to shoot the three, and he's short on that. Rebound comes down to Farr, back out to Shaw. He brackets the shot, tipped out there, and here comes C.J. Ellis for the Vikings. Back into the front court. Ellis, he's going to pop a long three, and he's got it. I think it's time for a timeout, and there is a timeout. Timeout Panthers, 12-0 Bryan. We'll be back. First Tire Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with the hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in-store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland, taking care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Patrick. Could you say that a little faster? That was a good job, Roger. Well, the Panthers have the ball, and they're down by 12. It's 12 nothing. Here's a penetration move. Nice move. Missed on the shot. Rebound by Men Menifee short as Hayes drove it in there nicely but missed his shot. And Menifee missed his rebound attempt. The Panthers are 0 for so far. 0 for about 8. I haven't got track of all the shots taken, but they haven't made any of them yet. Johnson, who has all the points but one for Brian, and he hoists up another three and makes it. He has three threes here in the first quarter. TJ Johnson putting on a show here, and it's 15 0. Wow, here's TJ Ford. Pass it off to the left side, left hand shot. No good from, well. Number is that, 20. Is that, that Sebastian Sanchez? I think it is Sebastian Sanchez. He, he was wore wearing zero in the first game, I thought. He was wearing zero, yes, this morning. By the way, um, Patrick, I'm thinking of history here. You mentioned that uh, the Bryan uniforms look kind of like North Carolina with that shade of blue. Yep. First free throw, hey, they made it. It's 15 to one. Menifee scores the first point. In the 1982 NCAA men's semifinals, North Carolina took a 14 to nothing lead on the Houston Cougars. Houston ended up losing by five. They played great from there on, but they dug themselves such a deep hole that they could never catch up, and the it's second a, free throw was yeah, missed. It's, uh, it's hard to dig yourself out of these holes. They got into that hole early in the first game, it was 10 to two, and uh, they ended up going down by 15 at halftime, and as much as 18 in the game this morning. Here's a nice drive penetration from Gooden, but he his shot attempt was swatted out of bounds, and I believe it was knocked out by Bro. 15 to one, 
2.02 to play here, first quarter from Lee College. Panthers trying to hang on here in the first quarter and try to get themselves squared away. Here's a good penetration move and a travel call. Wait a minute. A it travel a call travel by call. one of the referees and a foul called by the other. And a foul call is going gonna, is gonna to stand. I think it was on T.J. Ford. Jacob Walker went in there with the penetration, and he was bumped and bruised and caused a travel. He was abused. Yeah, and the foul was called as... Uh, that was before the travel call. As William Gale comes in for the Vikings. He's going to inbound the ball. He's having a hard time. Gets it into Gooden. He puts up a 10-foot baseline shot that's short. T.J. Ford has it. Takes it the distance, and he's fouled on his way up. His foul is going to be against C.J. Ellis. And let's see. We'll, I think Ford is going to go to the free throw line for two foul, foul shots here. Sometimes when things aren't going so well for you, it's good to take the ball in and just try to make something happen. His first free throw is good. The only way the Panthers have points so far today is this afternoon is from the free throw line. They're two for three so far. Here's his second free throw. It's good. And sometimes the free throw shooting can get you going. 15 to three now. Good job of breaking the press by the Vikings. Little alley-oop pass. No good on the shot. Rebound, no good. And a foul against Brian. And it's going to be against number, number one. T.J. Johnson picked up the foul. A good little alley-oop pass. The shot was overlaid. The rebound was overlaid. And then there was a foul on the third rebound attempt on T.J. Johnson of the Vikings. Looks like they're playing a little half-court pressure defense here. And it passes down low to Bro, who's fouled on his shot. And they're going to go to the free throw line again. By the way, when Bro turned around, he looked a little surprised that there was nobody right there to contest his shot. But it ended up working out for him because he hesitated, then went up, and he drew the foul. He didn't make the shot, but he gets two free throws. But as soon as I say that, he misses the first one. I believe that foul was on T.J. Johnson. If that's true, that's his second. He has 11 points here in the first quarter. Uh, including Ridge Point would not mind seeing him go to the bench. Right, I think they're... Fairly happy about that, and Burrow was able to make the second free throw. It's 15 to four. It was 15 to nothing. So, See, they, little they've progress come back with being four made. Four straight free throws. Well, they haven't made every one of them, but four without an answer Here's from a Brian. Now, long pass down to the Viking uh, receiver. There is Gale, whose shot was swatted out of bounds. I believe the, the block was by Jaden Jinks. No, Sebastian. Or was it Sebastian? Yeah. Sanchez. Sebastian. Here's an inbounds pass to Ellis. Brings it back out. Gooden has it now about 35 feet out. Ellis again. Guarded by TJ Ford Jr. Swing it back to Gooden. They're taking their time now. Under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Right side near the half court line. Gooden and Ellis are playing catch. Now Gooden has it, penetrates right side. He's got the lane now. He's ran into a couple of tall timber, and here's the long three-pointer. No good from Brooks. And a foul on the rebound. Who's it on? 21. That's Jinx, and I Jinx. guess, you know, you have to commit a foul or two when you're dealing with the big man, Maxi. Yeah, like Maxi's back in. He had taken a break, but he's back in there now. I would say Maxi would be one of the hardest guys to box out that I've seen here today anyway. Right side corner, some pressure, and a pass down to Maxi who was trying to get some good low post position. Ball was knocked out of bounds. Darius Brooks made the entry pass. Gale will inbound it for the Vikings, who lead 15 to four. Simply passes it into Maxi. Maxi out to Gooden. Shake and bake. Passes it off to the left side and a shot by Ellis. That's his second three of the game. 18 to four with 15 seconds to play first quarter. Burrow has a good fake. Looks like he got fouled, no call. He now dribbles 
to a shot attempt. No good. Rebound comes down to, who is that? That's Hayes on a rebound, and he's fouled by, was it 25? I think that foul's on Maxi. I think so, because he's going straight to the bench. That's his second foul, and I think their two of their starters have two fouls. Well, and correction, he's not going to the bench. But we had mentioned earlier they have a slim bench. They only have three players on the bench. That could prove to be a factor as this game progresses. Here's a free throw attempt knocked in from Hayes. That's his first point of the game. He had 15 in the first game this morning to lead the Panthers to that victory. So another slow start here this afternoon. They have to overcome. Second free throw is good. Two for two there for Hayes. And it's an 8-12-point game, 18-6. to six. All the way down the floor comes Walker. He's going to lay it up and overlay. No good. We'll take a break. After one quarter of play, it's 18-6. to six. Ryan. Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Neville Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? That's right. Fourth generation here in the Neville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. You can give him a call, you can go online, or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Back here at Lee College. Panthers trail by 12 as we start the second quarter. It's 18 to 6. Hayes to the right baseline. Lays it up a little floater. It's no good. And it's going to be a foul on Brian again. And I believe it's going to be on number 23, William Jefferson. You know, as soon as he got into the ball game, he committed a foul. So, you know, the eight players, if, if the, uh, a bunch of them get into foul trouble. They might have to finish the game with four guys on the floor. They're going to have to watch it out, watch out as the Panthers have reached the bonus here in the first 12 seconds of the second quarter. And maybe that's a good thing because all their points so far have been from the free throw line. The attempted free throw is no good from Jinx. But they get the rebound. So they maintain possession. Ford has it, left side between his legs, now to the top of the key, still dribbling out there, penetrates now, jump stop, and the ball's taken away as Gale comes out of there with a nice pass to his teammate on the left side and a nice layup by Jacob Walker from Gale on a little nice bounce pass on a break there, 20 to six. Brian leads. Sanchez, left side for three. That's their first field goal of the game, Roger. Their first field goal. And it They've comes had nothing but free throws. Almost up nine to that minutes point. in. That's right. 20 to nine. Penetration now, left side. Shot attempt, no good. Rebound comes out of Jinx, had it knocked away, and here come the Vikings with the ball still. Ellis with a shot, and he cans it as well. From about 15 feet right side, and he now has eight. C.J. Ellis and T.J. Johnson, the bulk of the scoring so far for the Bryan Vikings. Nice fake in there by Bro, who puts in a little 12-foot shot from the, from the lane, and it's 22-11. We made found, his defender part of the paratrooper club. Yeah, we, we found out earlier today that there's not going to be any quit in the, in the Panthers as a nice pass down low to Gale with nobody on him. And he's able to lay it in. It's 
to 11. Brian leads with six minutes to play. First half, TJ Ford way out top, and he cans a three-pointer, and he's fouled on the play. Whoa. There was no doubt about the foul. The uh, player came right in on him. Chance for the rare four-point play. And the lead is now down to 10, and right. in one fell swoop, he could cut it to single digits. It's, it's good on the free throw, so Ford now has six off of that four-point play. And the lead is only nine. That's 24 to 15. It was 15 to nothing. I may, forgive me if I repeat that a few times, and now an illegal pick called against William Jefferson. He's, he's picked up a couple of quick fouls, and according to my stat sheet, which is very unofficial, I have three players for the Vikings with two fouls. Okay, so who just got called for a foul? That was Jefferson. He Jefferson? has two. Maxie okay. has two, and T.J. Johnson, the so, leading scorer, has two. I got to get this in. He and Jerry Seinfeld have both been called for an illegal pick. Here's a penetration by T.J. Ford. Swing of the pass out. Shot attempt, no good, but Sanchez picks it up. He puts it in on a little floater, and it's down to seven. 24 to 17. I sense a comeback. Panthers have already made a comeback. They've cut that lead in half. Here's penetration from Ellis. Oh boy, and he lays it in. That was a tough shot, but he got it in there. He has 10 points now. Here's penetration right side. TJ Ford, he's blocked. That and guy fouled. who just fouled him, he fouled him the last time he put up a three. I think he. And I, so uh, I believe he has two fouls now. Yeah. As well, it's the fourth Viking with two fouls. Ford will go to the line now for two. He tried a jumper from about 12 feet out right side, and he was knocked to the floor. Three for three from the line so far. Make that four for four. Boy, if you can make your free throws, what a difference that can make for yourself and for the team. 26 to 18 now. Ford will shoot the second one with 5.07 to play in the first half. He makes that one as well. He's made five free throws and a three. It's 26 19. Clock, clock winding down to the five minute mark of the first half. Walker has it. Down low to Maxi. How are you going to stop him in there? They By tried. fouling him. <laughs> <laughs> and the foul looks like it's going to be on Jinx. Tried to block it, but it's hard to get around him. He's he's a big. He had to have played football, Roger. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, he had to have. Look at how. He reminds me of that kid uh, Reuben Fothery played for right. Foster. Remember that, yeah. Here's a free throw. It's good. Nice, smooth stroke on that one. He has two points. Two for three from the free throw line. And Fatherly ended up going to Texas A&M, I believe. Whoop, whoop, he sure did. And he played uh, offensive tackle. I think he might have got hurt this year at some point. Second free throw is no good, and Jinx has the rebound to Ford. Running Every up the Aggie right side. got hurt. And a foul as Malcolm Gooden just basically ran in front of Ford. They've been in the double bonus now for, I don't know, how many minutes? But uh, it's been a foul fest for Brian here in the first half. And that's what's keeping the Panthers in the ball game, I think. You said Ford's free throw is good. Fathery, the Aggie football player, got hurt. But the whole team was hurt just by looking at their win-loss record. I couldn't believe such uh, an, ac an acclaimed recruiting class for two years just was horrible. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Ford makes his next free throw. He's made seven free throws in this ball game. And that is really what has gotten the Panthers in this ball game. They've made 11 free throws, I believe, all together. 27-21. Ellis for the Vikings. Off to Gooden. He's at near the half-court line. T.J. Johnson, who has made a couple of threes from that point, misses that one. Maxie with a hustling rebound. Tipped off to Gooden, who has it now for the Vikings. Swing it to the corner, Ellis. Maxie down low. He just, what do you call that? Bulling your way through there? He yeah. just made an easy basket, but his body 
kind of like a Charles Barkley type move, you know? If you can remember those days. Now Ford has it. Eight point deficit for the Panthers. But they're showing a lot of life here in the second quarter. Long three from Ford. He's got it. He has found the touch here. He has made all of his baskets, I think, including his free throws, and it's 29-24. Ellis now for the Vikings. Right side cut off nicely by Menifee. And a long three for Ellis. He's, he got cut off by Menifee, and he said, well, I'll just step out here and pop up a three, and he did. It's 32-24. And the scoring has picked up as both teams knocking some shots down, and here's a drive into the lane. You were waiting for the call there as Gabriel Bro drove in, knocked the guy over. A bit of a delay call, though, Roger. He looked like he was gonna let it go, and then he blew the whistle. It was a late whistle, no but doubt I, about it. But I believe it was a good call. It looked like a pretty good yeah, call. Yeah, I agree. 32 to 24. Brian Lee over the Panthers. Johnson to the baseline. Don't is he gonna pick up a foul on that? Whoa! Yeah. That's his third foul, Roger. That could be the play of the game right now. I did not see the foul. They called him a little uh, extended his arm, I guess, is what they called. By the way, this is what they call the championship game of the silver bracket. So basically, Ridgepoint ended up in the loser's bracket when as soon as you lose one, that's where you end up. But if you keep winning after that, then you can get what they call in a lot of tournaments the consolation trophy. I thought but, that's, uh, that's yeah, they've the changed it now. Yeah, it's silver bracket championship everything's game. A, everything's a championship no matter what, huh? Corner now, Sanchez for the Panthers. Trying to uh, cut into that eight-point deficit. Manif Menifee fades from about 12. He might want to be a little bit closer on his shot, but he looked fairly confident with it, but he was short on it. Maxi was in the way. Well, that, that, <laughs> that makes a difference when big number 25 is playing defense on you. Two and a half to play here in the first half. And the Vikings now taking their time with two of their guards well out near the half-court line. One of those guys being Ellis, who drives to the right side, pauses, back to Gooden. Little floating shot from the left side, no good. Menifee with a rebound, TJ Ford all the way to the basket. That's his first miss, and it was a layup. Now Maxi gets a long pass. It's tipped away by, let's see, that's um, Far, I believe, was able to tip that away. <laughs> I was playing charades Rod's, over Rogers here. Roger's trying far, to help me out far, here. Far, far away. I saw the three and I was making sure it was the one three and not the two three. Far saved an easy layup on that play. Because Maxi was about to go up. You know what we're gonna talk about at halftime, Patrick? I'm trying to figure that out. We're gonna talk about nepotism. Are you gonna define it and all that? I'm gonna define it and the various layers of it. Here's an inbounds pass. And how it really doesn't matter in sports. Because you got to succeed, and it doesn't matter whose son you are, that kind of thing. Sounds like we have a philosophy lesson coming. Here comes Gooden, cross court, ends up in the hands of Ellis, short on the shot, tipped out, and it comes out to uh, Hayes, and that ball's tipped away from him, out of bounds, and who is this? whose ball is it? It's going to be the Vikings' ball. I don't know how that happened. Hayes had it, and then he got tipped away by... Uh, Jacob Walker, who hustled down for the ball and somehow went off the hand or something there of of Hayes. You know, the score's been 32-24 to 24 for about two full minutes. Now. Yeah, we were just talking about how it was the scoring was picking up, and then all of a sudden it slowed down again. Brooks thought about a three, and then he brought it back out, dribbling near half court again, being guarded by Sanchez. The ball is dribbled off his foot. And out of a out of bounds as Darius Brooks tried to make something happen for the Vikings there. Now TJ Ford for the Panthers. Far. Hayes. About 14 feet out. Off the back iron. Rebound comes down to Ellis. Ellis. And Walker for three. Left side. He has five points. And uh, let's see. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
threes here in the first half. That is so that's pretty good exactly shooting. 60% of their points. Here's TJ Ford for three, and he answers. He's having a game. That's his third three of the game. We didn't see much of that in the first game this morning. He fought for some points, but we really didn't see the sharp shooting. Today, we're, or this afternoon, we are seeing it. There's 25 seconds to play, and Gooden has it. Walker, who hit, just hit a three, he's gonna be short on this one. Ball tip, it is gonna be off of, off of the Panthers, and Brian will maintain possession of the ball. That was one of those 17 calls. 17 seconds. I don't think they really know who touched it last, but there were three white jerseys there and one blue one. So, so they had to. It's out on the white team. <laughs> Law of averages. 12 seconds in the half. Eight point lead for Brian. Walker had a pass tipped and intercepted. Here comes Hayes down the floor. Lays it in at the buzzer. That's a big bucket as Hayes takes it down the floor and scores. It's halftime. The score at halftime, Brian 35 and the Panthers of Rich Point 29. When you fall behind by 15, it's not too bad to be losing by six when you head to the locker room at halftime. Our VipeFortBend.com coverage of the Ridge Point Panthers in the Lee College Holiday Invitational Tournament is brought to you by Archer Volkswagen, Next Level Urgent Care, the Needville Insurance Agency, First Tyrant Automotive, and by Xfinity Mobile. Xfinity Mobile is the best kept secret in wireless. We'll be right back and we'll talk about, you know, whether you're the child of someone who's really great at something, you know, is it fair? That's just a tease. We'll be back. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Owl to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text N-L-U-C-A-P-P -P to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. First Tyrant Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So... With a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAuto.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Norman, before 
before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, Doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity Internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited Intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. It's halftime here at Lee College in Baytown. It's the championship game of the silver bracket. Ridge Point trailing the Bryan Vikings 35 to 29. And we want to remind you that tomorrow we will be on the air just before noon as we bring you the girls game between the Austin Bulldogs and also the South Houston Trojans. And then right after that, the boys game between the Austin Bulldogs and the Randall Lions, the brand new school in Lamar Consolidated ISD, will see them in varsity action for the first time that your eyes and my eyes have actually seen them. So, uh, Patrick, I have a question for you. I'm going to drop a name on you. Tell me if you know who this person is. Tracy Ellis Ross. Does it ring a bell? Uh, does not. Okay. Sorry. All right. I didn't think it did. All right. So. There is this uh, particular uh, publication that really doesn't deserve to have its name mentioned that did an article over the weekend about nepotism and it's been kind of ragging on mainly actors, Hollywood types, who the uh, article basically insinuates that they got where they are only because they had a famous mother or father. And I think there are some people in the entertainment business who you could say really never would have had the door open for them if not for the the fame that their parent achieved now i don't think that's really true in sports because and you know the first person i think of as we watch this game is clearly tj ford jr his dad was a great basketball player led willow ridge to a state championship also went to the texas longhorns and played very well and then had a very productive career in the nba so just because you're the son of T.J. Ford, you've got to perform on the court to get the accolades that he's gotten so far and and to earn the college offer that uh, he will probably get. It'll probably a pretty, be a pretty decent one. And if we thought about it long enough, we could probably think of some professional athletes whose children who have not come around to be quite as good as they are and some who have turned out to be better. Yes. Barry Bonds is not my favorite athlete in fact, far from it, but he was better than his dad, Bobby Bonds. So was Ken Griffey Jr. You bet. All that's true, but number one, genetics have something to do with it. Of course. Number two, pro jock genes. Um, many of these actors and actresses and even athletes would not have gotten the op the same opportunities, perhaps had their parents not been who they were. For instance, T.J. Ford, I'm sure he has, has had ample opportunities via the AAU circuit and so on and so forth, although a lot of people do. But when, you're, when your father is a former basketball player in the NBA, that, that puts you in some different uh, opportunistic areas. But that said, you still have to produce, like you said, Roger, and, and T.J. Ford Jr. here is doing it this afternoon. He's and really showing it. You would really have a hard time finding a high school anywhere that has as many offspring of NFL players um, than Ridge Point does. They have not only football players whose dads played in the NFL, they have some awesome volleyball playing daughters right. of, of guys who played in the NFL and are now proud Ridge Point dads. So it's amazing, isn't it? It really is. But uh, when you have that pro jock DNA in you, yep. uh, it really does seem to make a difference. But before we start this third quarter, Roger, I have two questions for you. Number but, one. Wait a minute. we got to resolve the Tracy Ellis Ross. 
Oh. We'll have to do it for the next break oh in the action. Because here we go. I won't be able to ask my questions until yes, that will. happens. Well, we'll, we'll I'm gonna get forget it done. Them. Don't worry. Well, this third quarter starts with the Brian Vikings with the ball. And they have that six-point lead. Walker from the left side off the top of the backboard. Here's Ford with the rebound all the way coast to coast. He underlays the shot. He tried to go right-handed. He probably should have put the left hand out for the layup. Here's a shot from T.J. Johnson. And he starts off the way he started the first half. He had 11 points in the first half, but he didn't play a lot of it due to foul trouble. And he scores the first bucket for the uh, Vikings here in the third quarter. And he comes up with the rebound off of the miss as the Panthers miss an easy, well, a relatively short shot from the lane. That was a short shot by far. <laughs> it was close yeah, you by better... far, and he didn't hit it. <laughs> you better pay attention to Roger because he's going to give you a lot of this kind of stuff. Now, what do they have, a five-second call? I think a five-second call was called as uh, T.J. Johnson was maneuvering the ball back and forth but not moving anywhere, and he was, he was guarded closely, and I think that was the call. It's an eight-point lead for Brian. Panthers have never led again here in this game. Similar to the game this morning as Hayes takes it into the lane and pops in a little 12-foot shot. Hayes now had four in the first, first half. And I remember this morning he kind of got hot in the second half, which helped him make that comeback and win. Here's Walker. Tries to get down to Maxi and it's stolen away. <laughs> by, oh my goodness, they're tangled up down there, Hayes and Maxi. Here's Ford with a within three on that shot. Pass attempt over to Johnson, left side. Boy, that guy, he's a good shooter. That is his fourth three here in the ball game, and I don't know if his shots have even touched the rim today. They've just been silky smooth, and it's back to a nine-point lead. He's in the zone. Perhaps you're right. Here's Farr with Johnson on him. Hayes now with Walker on him. Hayes, a little step back from about 18 out, no good, and TJ Johnson has the rebound. He is the player of the game so far. Now Ellis, who had a good first half as well, he had, um, let's see, nine, he had 13 in the first half too. And he's actually the leading scorer of the first half. Now a five second call, no nope, timeout. As the coach from uh, the Brian calls timeout and it's 40 to 31 Brian over the Panthers right now. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. Roger, we need you to finish up that story about that Ross guy. It's going to have to wait. They're playing again. Oh, my I'm goodness, sorry. Roger. No, I'm not doing it on purpose. I but think that's he's just teasing us. He's using that strategy because he's a he's – a, oh, now they're starting to come out with a little weave, the Vikings. A little weave at the half-court line or close to it. Now – Gooden takes it into the basket. He's fouled by Menifee. So Gooden go to the line. He has no points in the game, but he's played a really good, as they say, a really good floor game. Have you heard that with phrase before? Yeah, I've heard it. I don't really know what it means. <laughs> Roger, you got time right now. Here's the first free throw. Okay, so no good. There we talked about nepotism at halftime, and there were these pundits on a certain network who were talking about. Um, Tracy Ellis Ross and whether Tracy Ellis Ross was as good as her mother. Who was who was her mother? Diana, Diana Ross? Oh yeah. Are you <laughs> kidding me? 
Ford takes it all the way in for a layup. I mean, and Diana it's... Ross is a legend <laughs> of Mount Rushmore proportions. Tracy Ellis Ross? Who? <laughs> Are you kidding me? By the way, Ford has 18 points now to lead all scores. As the Vikings have it in the front court. Now I get to go to my questions for Roger, and they're going to be a little easier to discuss. Gooden, who missed the free throws at the other end uh, just earlier, penetrates. Now the ball gets inside of Maxi, and if he's right at the basket, there's just no way you're going to stop him. And he lays it in, 42-33. I believe they had it down to, did they have it down to four at one point, Roger? I or think three, maybe? Six. Here's a shot from Sanchez. No good. Tipped out. Gooden has it for the Vikings. Pressures, pushes it up the front court. Now he pull, pulls it back. And Ellis for the Vikings. He's going to step up and just pop a three. And he airballed it. <laughs> he had a couple of threes. He had three threes in the first half. Question? But, okay, here's the question, Roger. I have two questions. Number one, what's the temperature in this place? It's about <laughs> 60 degrees. It's it can't be too far above 60. <laughs> it's uh, chilly but in it here. It was under 60 inside the Brazosport gym we on were, Tuesday. We I were, almost died. But we walked in here, and we both felt uh, the cool air. Hayes has it left side. Puts it up. No good. Tried to get it over Maxi. Played pretty good defense there. Oh, this time he's going to get a foul, I believe, as Hayes got it back. Fouls on Maxi, even though it looked like he was doing a pretty good job of trying to keep his hands straight up. It's a good idea to take it right at those guys who are in foul trouble, he and has Hayes did it. He has three now, according to my count. Now, I was off this morning on a couple of the players' foul trouble situations, but uh, we'll see how close I am this time. Maxi's going to come out now as Hayes puts his free throw in. Rogers using his... Fonzie technique to try to make things work around here. If you ever watch that show, Happy Days, Fonzie would just pound the jute box to make it work. And okay. Hayes makes both free throws. He's four for four for the line. Now a whistle. What do we got here? Rogers trying to figure this out. Well, we're we're kind of sitting here where. The near sideline is partially obscured. We just don't know what they called. Well, the whistle blew. They stopped play. Now they're going to inbound it at half court line. Well, that's Gale inbounding it down to TJ Johnson. He did. Bro on him. Johnson steps to the side, throws, shoots a three. No good. And the outlet pass is stolen by Gooden. Pass over to Walker. He hoists up a three. He's short on that. And the rebound comes down to Sanchez. To the forecourt he goes, and he hands it off to T.J. Ford. Good move as he drives to the basket. Looked like he might have traveled. No call. Puts it up and puts it in. He has 20 now in the ball game. He's showing it today here this afternoon. Down to five. Five-point game, 42-37. to 37. As we're kind of going back and forth on a little spurts here, Gooden finds his way to the left elbow. Tries to dish it off, deflected. Sanchez comes out of there with it. Bro, uh, up ahead, and he lays it. But and might, might have lost his control on the way up. T.J. Johnson short on a three. He's missed the last couple now. Good for the Panthers as he was. He's been hot this afternoon from outside. T.J. Ford has it. They got a chance to draw to within three or two. He's been hot, but not literally because it's freezing in here. <laughs> Ford into the lane. Passes it off to Hayes. Swing it out to Bro from the top of the key. No good. Tipped up by Sanchez. Up and oh, oh. And now. It off the glass. Thought he had it. It was around and out. It was Tough break. about as deep in the basket as you can be without falling through the net. Here's Walker. No good. Their last... Three or four long shots have been no good, and Gale will pick up the foul for uh, the Vikings as the Vikings have cooled off quite a bit here in the second half. By the way, did you know the city of Bryan was named for Williams Jenn William Jennings Bryan? Did not know that. It was. Okay, so what Here's was my your second, second question? question? We've been talking about T.J. Ford Jr., and uh, who was T.J. Ford? He was... Uh, he played in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Who drafted T. 
T.J. Ford? That's a good question. I'm going to have to think about Here's that. Here's a step back three from Ford. No good, but he's fouled on a three-pointer. And that's the second time tonight, this afternoon, he's been fouled on a three-point shot. He'll go to the line where he is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for seven from the line. Did you know the TJ, uh, the T in TJ is for Terrence? Terrence, yes. yes. No relation to Terrence Trent Darby. Here's the free throw attempt off the bracket. That's oh. his first miss from the line. The most important thing to do after missing a free throw is make the next one. How's that for wisdom? Get back on track here. Here's the free throw. Oh, I guess it was only a two-point. I was going to say, everybody went uh, off the line there. It was a three-point shot. And the Bryan coaches are hollering for that to be a two-point shot. But it looked like he was beyond the three-point line when he shot it Here at way Lee over there College, on the left side. They have two three-point lines. Right. You know. So maybe there's some confusion there. He was definitely behind that first line, which is the line they need to go by. The, the lead is four, and Got he can cut it to three. Here's the second, the third free throw of the three, and it's good. So he is now nine for ten from the line. 90%. If I recall, T.J. Ford Sr. was a pretty good free throw shooter himself, if I recall. You recall. Still waiting for your answer on my question, though, Roger. Here's Maxi way out, about 20 feet out. Now he's tried to spin his way down the baseline, and he's fouled by Jinx. Jinx again. I believe that's his third. And, and I think the reason the call went against Jinx is because he just kind of raised an elbow to kind of not to hit him, but just to impede right. his progress. But you kind of stick the elbow up, and you're likely to get called. Yeah, you uh, you draw a little bit of attention to yourself on the elbows being out. Maxi goes in. The pass was to Johnson. T.J. Johnson tried to chip it up with one hand. He was short on it. And here comes Ford. Hayes has it now. He was fouled. No call. Bro has it in the lane. He gets it back out to T.J. Ford. It's a three-point game. They have a chance to possibly tie it here. They're taking their time as Shaw has it on the right side, gets it to T.J. Ford. He thought about a three. Back to Shaw. Crossover. He's at the free throw line. About 17 feet out. Brackets it. No good. Tipped up and in by Hayes. Nice job by Hayes. Johnny on the spot with the tip in. It's 42-41. And the Panthers showing that grit that they showed this morning. Trying to make that comeback. Here's a drive all the way to the basket. Up and in. What a play by Jacob Walker of the Vikings. 44-41. Hayes has it now for the Viking, or excuse me, for the Panthers. Ten seconds to go here in the third quarter, and they're going to go for one. He's out about 40 feet from the basket. Three seconds. Two. Pops a three. No good. And that's the way the third quarter will end. Brian 44, Ridgepoint 41. Norman. Before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I got to get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Neville Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? 
That's right, fourth generation here in the Needville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. You can give him a call, you can go online, or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. Back at Lee College, Panthers trying to come all the way back here. They're down by three as we start the fourth quarter, and there's going to be a foul called on the first sequence. It's going to be on T.J. Johnson. I've got him for four now, Roger. I don't know if that's correct or not. But if that's his fourth, I would be hesitant to keep him in. Oh, Little yeah. inbounds play. Nicely worked as Jinx makes the cut to the basket. Now he lays it in. It's a one-point game. 44-43. They haven't changed the scoreboard yet. they got to make sure they get that right. Because right now, it's there you go. It's 43 on the board. Now steal. It's Hayes to Shaw. Ford lays it up and in. Looked like he got fouled on the play too, but they didn't call it. Ford has 24 points now as the Panthers take their first lead of the ball game. Walker goes all the way in for the layup. For the Vikings and a nice job by Jacob Walker. That lead didn't last very long. It lasted about five seconds. 46-45, Brian on top. Here's the penetration move. Layup no good. Hayes comes down with it. His shot was blocked, and there's a fight for the ball. Finally, Shaw comes out of there with it for the Panthers. Ford now. He's got a right-hand dribble to the right elbow area. Now he's fouled, and that foul is going to be on Brooks. Darius, Darius Brooks, his first foul of the game. Five team fouls now against the Bryan Vikings. And now T.J. Johnson will come out with those four fouls. And how many does the guy, Gale, who's replacing him have? Gale has three, according to my unofficial record here. Hayes from three-point land. He's got it. Just like this morning, he's heated up in the second half again. And let's see, he's got 6, 8, 10, 13 now on the game for Hayes. So Hayes and uh, Ford shouldering the scoring load here. Walker all the way to the basket again. Ball comes down to Maxi, who got fouled on his way up. By the way, not to be presumptuous, but should... Ridgepoint win this game. They lead 48-46 with 6.19 to go. We we like to do post-game interviews, but both this morning and here this evening in different venues, we're up above the floor. We can't really get to the players. So yeah. if we don't get an interview after the game, that'll be why. Here's a free throw by Maxi. It's good. He has six points, seven points in the ball game. Lee College has such a nice building for basketball. They need a scorer's table that's longer than about, you know, 16 feet. I mean, it, it needs to stretch longer, and so then you we can sit, sit there. down there. 48-47. <laughs> Panthers up by one. Maxie's second free throw is good. He's showing good touch for a big guy. 48 all with six minutes to play here in the ball game. Burrow has it. Hayes now, left side, being guarded closely. Gets a pick from Jinx. And now Hayes has it between the wheels. Here's Ford. Crossover, left side. Now loses the ball out of bounds, but it was deflected out of bounds off of, off of Brooks of the Vikings. Now the ball goes into an area where one of the referees has to retrieve. Roger, are you still thinking about who the, what team picked T.J. Ford Sr.? I'm afraid I just don't know. I have a little advantage over you on that. Bucks. Yep. There you go. I knew it because I remember my number one NBA team is the Milwaukee Bucks. Here's a long shot from Sanchez. Short. He went down after the play. Might have got fouled. Walker comes down up there with it. Long pass to Brooks, but he overthrew him. Brooks got a fingertip on it, but he couldn't haul it in, and it went out of bounds. Too hot to handle 
although it's very cold in here, if I didn't mention that before. i got one more question for you, Roger, when I get a chance. Here's Hayes, crossover, left side now, into the lane, short on his shot. And Brooks comes down with there with it. He comes out of there flying all the way down the floor. Left hand, no good. Rebound down to Ford, who goes full speed ahead on the right side. Down court. Sanchez, three-pointer. Got it. You could just see that one going in. Smooth as silk. There's a timeout. 51-48. Panthers on top. First Tire Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, uh, before we get back into it, you have, uh, are you done with questions or do I have another one? I got another question for you. Are you ready for it? Hurry, yeah. You got a pair of gloves I can borrow? Uh, <laughs> Only at home, uh, I wear them when I ride my bike. There you go. Vikings have the ball. They trail by three. Five and a half, five oh nine, five oh seven to play now here in the ball game. Vikings trying to work it with some foul trouble. TJ Johnson, the man who has four fouls, is back in the ball game. Here's Walker to the basket. He's fouled on his way in. Boy, I tell you, the last few well, the last few minutes here, he has been really a uh, drive to the basket guy he's not a very big guy but boy he's not afraid to take it in there he has let's see nine points in the ball game it's his first attempt from the free throw line he'll get two here 453 to play in a ball game you know what Patrick we've worked very hard today we've had some technical problems to deal with and we appreciate the help of Suna Venkat Merle Bertrand and of course the lovely and talented uh, Victor Mora as the first free throw is good. Um, so I say we swing by that hospitality room and see if they have anything left before we walk out <laughs> into the rain. Yeah, here's the second free throw attempt. That's also good. Jacob Walker having himself a pretty good ball game. 11 points. And it's 51-50. Hayes for the Panthers. Backs himself in. Shot attempt no good, and Maxi with the rebound. He built, pulled that one off the floor. It bounced one time, and Maxi was able to corral it. Here's Ellis. Haven't heard a whole lot from him lately. Walker, long three off the rim, no good. Johnson comes up with it for the Vikings. Double team in the corner now, and a timeout. Timeout. As it's Gooden. a good thing because he. Through a bounce pass, um, Gooden. Gooden did that bounced on the sideline. You know he was he was trying to throw it at the shin of one of the Ridge Point defenders who was right next to him. But uh, we'll take a quick break and be back. Uh, Ridge Point just leading by one, 51 to 50. We've got uh, not much time to about go. About four and a half minutes to play. Okay, thank you. I forgot to check. Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Neville Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? That's right. Fourth generation here in the Neville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. 
You can give him a call. You can go online or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. We're back. Well, the inbound pass goes to Maxi, who lays it in. Nice inbound play by the Brian Vikings, and it's 52-51. to Brian back on top. Rich Point had its largest lead of three moments ago, and now the Vikings have reclaimed it. Ford, step back, and he get called for the foul. I don't know if that was really a foul or not, but he got called for it. You know, um, Brooks does, no, I'm sorry, Gooden does not need to have a famous mom or dad to get a shot at acting. Just put it that way. You think he acted a little bit on that yes. one? Yes. He did go backwards a little bit and went to the floor. It looked a lot worse than it was, and I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, the foul was called against T.J. Ford. And now the Vikings have the ball with a one-point lead. Ellis all the way through. Now he gets it off to Walker, who's going to go crossover all the way to the lane. Lays it up and in. I would think he was he's the uh, star of the second half. He's really had a really impressive second half after being relatively quiet in the first half. 54 to 41. I believe it's a 6-0 run going for the Vikings now. And Ford gets oh. called for another offensive foul. You got to be dry shaving me. Well, it must that time he might have got the uh, forearm up a little bit. I'm not sure, but boy, oh boy. I don't think Coach Johnson for the Panthers is overly excited down there about all that's going on. Bro, almost a steal. Chips oh, it off one play. of the players, and it's a great <laughs> play by Bro. He's able to deflect it and then deflect it off of one of the Viking players out of bounds, and the Panthers are able to come out of there with it off the good hustle from Gabriel Bro. It's one of those jump out of bounds to save the ball and fling it off the other player, and you really can't good do it play. better than that. Panthers down by three here with under three to play. Bro, corner now, Hayes. Looking for somewhere to go. He's got the left elbow now, and he's guarded closely. Off to Shaw, who goes all the way through the baseline. Bounces it off one of his teammates and gets it back somehow. And the shot attempt is missed, but there's a foul on the rebound. They called it on Ellis. He must have pushed somebody down low. And the Panthers now have the ball underneath their own basket after that foul. Shaw inbounds it to Bro. Little 10 footer from the left side. He came up short on it. And Maxi had the rebound easily, and he got it off to Gooden. Gooden has not scored any points tonight, but he has really played a pretty good ball game. He drives it all the way to the left, left hand layup. He shot it with his right hand, and he overlaid it. Ford has it. He lost it off of one of the defenders of the Vikings, and here come the Vikings back. Pass off to Maxi, who lays it in. Nice pass by Gooden. And all of a sudden, it's a five-point lead for the Vikings. I believe they scored eight in a row. Here's Shaw. Right side, spinning in the lane now. Ford, long three, got it! What a shot by Ford. Timeout. Panthers, 56-54. We'll be right back. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc. Doc. Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. 155 to play here from Lee College. Panthers trail by two. Vikings have the ball in the backcourt. 
Ellis has it for the Vikings now. Front court looked like he traveled, and he did. And the Panthers get the ball back. You know, sometimes from that turnover. you put on that full court press, and you don't necessarily have to swat the ball out of somebody's hands or intercept a pass. Sometimes you can force a travel. And that's what happened there. 56 54 for, for the Panthers. Front court. Wanted to go to Shaw, and he was covered closely. He finally got it to him. Now Hayes has it in the lane. Five footer up and good over Maxi. Number three, nine, two, two. Hayes has 15 now. Nice drive there, and it's 56 all. A minute and 20 to play in a ball game. Walker for the Vikings, being guarded by Hayes. He's out toward the half court line. They're going to take their time here. Walker drives right by Hayes, all the way to the basket, deflected, no good. Rebound to Maxi, who lays it in. Maxie. And now what's the call here? It's an injury. Got a player to... down the floor there. Looks like it's Walker who made the drive. And he's on the floor and they decided to stop the play here. TJ Johnson was going to try to help him up, but he said, I want to stay down. And now they're stretching his leg. So it looks like it's just a cramp. They're just trying to stretch the muscles on the back of his left leg. You know, they got him lying down, one leg down, one leg straight up in the air. Well, that, that reminds me of all those football football timeouts we had this year due to cramps. And we have such great nutrition technology, really, for preventing cramps. And, of course, there are always things like bananas and electrolytes. You know, we, we still seem to be having lots of muscle cramps. He is very uncomfortable as he walks back to the bench. And I don't know that they're going to be able to put him right back in. No, it doesn't look like it. He doesn't look like he's ready. But I, one of the assistant coaches was trying to trying to use an old-fashioned remedy there. Did you see that? Kick him in the back of the thigh. <laughs> he was kind of walking a little goofy, and the coach just put a, put a foot to the, to the back end there and as if to say, all right, let's kick this thing into gear. I don't know if it's going to work or not. But Walker's down there with a smile on his face. I think he's going to be all right. Whether he gets back into the ball game with only a minute to play is another question here. It's 58 to 56. Brian on top of the Ridge Point Panthers. Way out on top is Hayes. He drives to the left side. He's fouled on his way to the basket by Darius Brooks. And let's see, are they in the bonus? They are. So... Uh, Hayes will go to the free throw line for the one and one. And he has a four for four night going so far from the free throw line. I should say four for four afternoon. Looks like night out there. His he free throw is good. He'll get, the second, he'll get the second one to try to tie it. 58-57 right now with 50 seconds to play in the ball game. It's been a good one. His second free throw is good. Nothing but the net. Six for six. We're going to come down to somebody's heroic shot here. Maxi comes back to help out his team. Gooden has it. Double team. Long pass to TJ Johnson. Gets it off to Ellis. Back to Gooden. Panthers scrambling. And there's a timeout. Timeout. Brian calls a timeout. Tied at 58 with 36 to play. Here in a ball game. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC APP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. All right, Patrick, you got yourself a pretty good finish to call. There's a good finish this afternoon. 58 points 
was enough to win for Ridgepoint in their morning game against Spring Westfield, but it will not be enough to win this one because we're tied at 58. Yeah, if they stay at 58, they will not win. That's a guarantee. It's also a guarantee that this game will not end in a tie. I mean, who wants that? I know I don't. Nope. I don't think anybody would want that. Vikings have the ball, tie score, and there's 35 seconds to play in the ball game. Are they gonna go for the last shot? They're gonna try, but that's a long time. Well, nowadays it is. Seems like it used to be, let's see, a foul call. What is it call? Five second call? Boy, oh boy. That, I was, that's a surprising call there because he was driving to the basket when he made the call. I Boy. don't see the Brian coaches really arguing about it. They though. were shaking their heads. Shaking their heads. I but saw the all, all of them disagree with that call, and I'm not sure if I agree with it either, but the Panthers got a break. Ford, 15 seconds to play. Tie game. Could come down to the last shot. Ford eludes his man. He still has the ball. Who's going to take the shot, Roger? Ford. I believe so. Six seconds to play. Ford trying to drive. He's got contact. Loses the ball. What is it here? Hold on, you can't call timeout. They call timeout, the Brian coach, no, the Panther coach called timeout when Ford had the ball in the lane. So what's... You're saying that Ford did not actually have possession of the ball, that it was rolling loose? I, what I was, I was thinking that that was the Viking coach calling timeout. It was the, it was Coach Johnson of the uh, Panthers, so they absolutely could call timeout there. Ford went in on the penetration. He got bumped around a little bit, lost control. Somehow he got the ball back on his backside. And then Coach Johnson was able to call a timeout and draw up a play with, what was there, 2.1? 2 2.1. What play do you got there? You got plenty of time to catch and shoot. You could probably take a dribble or two as well. Well, I'm going to say Gray has been shooting very well. So Who? Gray, Dorian Gray, Hayes, sorry. Hayes, Hayes. Dorian Gray's an author. Dorian Hayes. <laughs> I would I would agree with you. I would look at, um, I would look for Hayes or even Sanchez. He's kind of a, you know, you get him open from outside, he's gonna, he's able to hit a long shot, so. Now you can pass it from one player to another, but it's gotta be immediate. After yeah. you receive the inbounds pass, throw it to someone else. And they're going to get it underneath their own basket, so it's going to be a tough spot for the Vikings to defend. It's also a tough pass to make. Tough angles on some of these. Here's the attempt now. It's going to come in to Ford. He's guarded very well by Gooden, who stole the ball and lost it out of bounds. He went all the way down to point three. Can you shoot with point three? Only catch and shoot real quick. Maybe an alley-oop to Menifee, but then he's got uh, that big guy. Here's the pass inside. Looking for Menifee. Oh, what did they call here? The pass was made, and I think Bro got the inbound pass and tried to lay it in, but the whistles blew while he was trying to shoot. And now they're talking about it. Game over is what they're saying. All right. Well, not over, but regulation time regulation is over. Regulation time. Game is not over. It's 58 all. We'll be back with overtime in mere moments. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with the hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. 
Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Neville Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? That's right. Fourth generation here in the Neville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. You can give him a call, you can go online, or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. We got All extra right. time. Extra time. Who you got with four fouls? We got T.J. Johnson with four fouls of the... Uh, Vikings, and I don't believe anybody on the Ridge Point team. We've got a couple guys with three, including TJ Ford. Jinx looks like he has three. Menifee only has two, according to my book here. And he'll jump center against TJ Johnson, and they're uh, going over the floor uh, looking for any spots where maybe someone sweaty fell on the spot. Uh, again, it's frigidly cold in here, so. I can't imagine anyone sweating, but maybe they are. Well, I'm sure those fellows down there are working it up a good sweat. We're trying to. How do you know what would be really good right now, Roger, is a good cup of hot chocolate? I'd take a cup of hot coffee. Mm. A little hot chocolate with some marshmallows. Jacob Walker uh, looks like he's okay. He had the problem with a cramp in his left leg. He's back in. Menifee gets the tip. And the Panthers will have the first possession of overtime. Four minute overtime. TJ Ford, long three, short. Rebound down to Johnson of the Vikings. TJ Ford has 27 points here in a ball game to lead all scores. But the Vikings have real good balance. 16, 13, 13, and 14 by their various players. TJ Johnson guarded by Bro. No dribble there, he gets it to Walker. Walker being guarded by Hayes. Nobody can stay with Walker. He can get to the basket anytime he wants, and he does there and draws the foul. I believe it's on Hayes. Yes. According to my stats, he's that's his first foul of the ball game. And Walker, the guy who went off with the cramps, able to come back in and get himself to the free throw line for two free throws. He has, he's one of the guys with 13 points for the Vikings. He's going to add a point to that with the first made free throw. He's three for three from the free throw line. He's had a solid game. One point lead for the Vikings. And... He rattles the second one in with a good shooter's touch. 60 to 58. Vikings lead. Bro, left side. Looking to Hayes, who's guarded by Walker very closely. Hayes, right side, pulls up for about a 12 footer, and he puts it in. Hayes is money. He has 19 now in the ball game. He's shown me some smooth play in both games that I've seen him today. Johnson has it, free throw line, drives it the lane, lays it up, no good, rebound comes out long. Gooden has it, tried to get it off to Maxi, but it was stolen from him by Bro. He was fouled, no call, but Ford takes it in, reverses, oh, in and out. Oh, what a shot attempt, it did everything but go in. And Bro did a good job of getting that ball stolen and the activity in motion down there, but they were unable to score. Two minutes and 10 seconds to play in the ball game, overtime here, and it's tied at 60. Gooden penetrates, now brings it back out. And he's still dribbling, and now the five second count comes. He takes it in, off to Johnson, who drives the lane, turn around, shot from about five feet out was short. T.J. Ford has it. Long pass. Menifee. Oh, what, he, what happened? He, he just, just lost his concentration, I think. Didn't realize where he was. 
All he had to do was catch and lay it in, and he took a couple of baby steps and then tried to dribble, and he got called for the travel. Roger, I don't think he realized he was right at the basket for a layup there. He might. I think he was probably surprised that he was so wide open. Well, that was I don't part think, of it. Yeah, there was nobody there, and all he had to do was catch it and lay it in, and he... He traveled, and I think he thought he was on a different spot of the floor, and very unfortunate for him and the Panthers. And he's been uh, replaced here for the defensive purposes. I think Jinx checked in for him. And now Walker has it for the Vikings. Five counts started. Dribbles right around his man, all the way to the basket and in. Oh, man, he's got 17 now. Jacob Walker is putting on a show here in the second half. 62 to 60. Panthers trail with a minute 20 to play in overtime. Ford, three point land. Nami drives, spinning, and he's fouled on his way to the basket. The foul, I think, is going to be on Gooden. That was a square dance foul. He kind of <laughs> gave him the do si do and yep. locked elbows and slung him, and there yeah. you go. Yeah, he was <laughs> on his way to a bucket there, and then Gooden. Got a hold of the elbow, or locked the elbow there, and now the referee is wiping the ball off. It's a long wait for the gold bracket championship game. Nothing it's worse than being ready to play the next game, and then in the game before you go to so overtime. Oh, there are some things worse than well, that, there's, well, but it's pretty bad. Figuratively <laughs> speaking. <laughs> Free throw attempt is good. 10 for 11 from the free throw line from for Ford. He's looking for his 29th point. Here is his free throw. It is good, and we have a tie score again. 62 all with a minute 14 to play. And over time, the inbound pass is overthrown. My goodness. Johnson simply overthrew Walker there. Right out of bounds and a oh. big break for the Panthers. Well, the teams are even now. Both have made just kind of an unforced error, yeah. and there you go. So the score is right as it should be yeah. by the basketball gods, 62 to 62. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Ford's going to inbound the ball for the Panthers to Sanchez, and he's short on his shot. He's hit a couple of long shots. That time he was short. And the Vikings have the ball again. With a minute to play and a tie score at 60. And a foul is going to be called on Ford. Way out on top. According to my book here, he has four fouls. I hope I'm right. As opposed to five. As opposed to five, exactly. You, you don't want him to have... I, I mean, you want him to have three. Right. But you know he has at least four. The only thing here is Malcolm Gooden has yet to score today. And he's 0 for 2 from the free throw line. This free throw is good, though. Gooden is good on the free throw. He's in the book. We have exactly one minute to go. I think Gooden has played the entire game. His second free throw is good. He just does a lot of good things out there. Ball handling, defense, passing, and so on. He has two points now, and he almost comes away with a steal there. Hayes able to gather it. They're down by two are the Panthers. Ford has it. Now there's going to be a timeout or a whistle. What's it, what's it going here? We've got a player who got hurt. It was good. It's, it's a good and cramping up again, well, it looks I, like. I don't know what happened. He might have got need. And Coach Johnson is, I think, wondering why the whistle blew. Yeah, why did they have to stop play? You know, T.J. Ford could have been a nanosecond away from making a, a play. In that situation, I don't think you really do call blow the whistle. Coach Johnson is questioning it. Now he's trying to draw up a play from the sidelines, tell his players what he wants. Hayes gets the inbound pass, back to Ford, getting a pick from Jinx. Goes the opposite way, lays it up and around and out. Hayes has got it, though. Down low, and he's... Boy, oh boy, I did not see a foul there. And Maxi is walking around in disbelief on that play. <laughs> Does Maxi have five yet? Well, they called it on. Who did they call it on? I think they called it on Maxi, but if that is, that maybe that's his fourth. I got him for four. 
So that's a fourth foul on him. I thought that would maybe be his fifth. However, Hayes misses the free throw. That's the first one he's missed, six out of seven. That is exactly right. My son would say the ball does not lie on that one because I don't know if there was a foul on that. And he did miss the first free throw. 64 to 62. Hayes, second free throw is bottom of the net. He's able to get one out of two there. He now has 20 points in the ball game. Corner, Gooden, shooting it up there. Not sure he needed to shoot at that time. Rebound comes down to Ford. One point game. To Bro, look like he might have walked, no call. Rebound fought for, and it's gonna go off. One of the Panthers, it is Hayes who went to the floor, almost like a fumble recovery there, and he couldn't quite come out of there with it. 17 seconds to play, and it's a one-point game. Vikings have the ball. Both teams in the bonus, so any foul will send somebody to the free throw line. T.J. Ford now trying to do a little bit of mop-up mop work down there, and as uh, Hayes had gone to the floor, and apparently there are people sweating down there, Roger, because they're having to pick up scoop up some of that sweat when they go to the floor. Gooden has it. Back to Walker. Looked like he might have walked, but he did keep that pivot foot. Ball is tipped out of bounds. I think it's going to be off of the Vikings. It was off of uh, TJ Johnson. How did that ball go off of him? I He was standing <laughs> out of bounds, knowing he didn't have a shot at it, and the Ridgepoint player slapped it off of his leg. That was a good play by the Ridgepoint player. I don't know who it was, though. Nine and a half seconds to go. Ridgepoint calls timeout. They trail by one. That might have been Bro down there making that play again. Bro's very good at that. He made a just as spectacular play on the far sideline. Yep. By the way, right over there in front of T.J. Ford Sr., you see uh, him in the hoodie appropriately in this cold arena. He's in the front row, and he's got the yep, the green, gray-green hoodie. Well, what are they going to draw up here? They got nine and a half seconds to play, the Panthers, and they're about uh, a little bit past half court inbounding the ball. What do you, I mean, what could you possibly say except P.J. Ford, go to the basket. If you've got something, take it. Otherwise, dish it off. I like Hayes, too. I, I just don't think you want to say we will have that guy take the shot no, period, I, I no think matter what what i'm saying is ford's going to orchestrate it if he if he's got something he's going to take it or he's going to dish it off i don't know what else you could draw up that would be any more effective than that you still have to score the shot let's find out what they do but i you got to believe the ball is going to be in ford's hands and if you're the vikings would you do everything you could to deny him the ball no, I would make sure you, you cover everybody. So you got, uh, you got Bro, Gooden, Ford, Gooden. Jinx, Sanchez, and Hayes. Ford has it. Eight seconds. Seven. And the clock. What do we got here? Uh, Offensive foul. What in the world? It's on Dorian you, both Hayes. Both of us were looking the opposite way, and Hayes cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. He's standing out of bounds. Hands extended in disbelief. Now Ridgepoint's got a foul quickly. Apparently, Go for the steal. if you don't get it immediately, yeah. you got a foul immediately. So the call was an illegal pick, which neither one of us saw. Timeout, 64-63. Brian leads. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUCAPP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. Well, it will be a shame if Ridgepoint can't get a bring a victory home 
in this second game of their tournament doubleheader. Well, it's going to take something magical because they trail by one and the Vikings have the ball. The only thing is, is the Vikings are in, in their own end. So things could happen. If I'm the Vikings, I throw that ball long, make sure the ball is tipped by somebody. The Panthers aren't but guarding not the inbounder. Do Here it comes to Maxi. Oh, he falls down. Got Bro it. has it. Timeout with three and a half seconds to play. What is the call now? Well, I think uh, I'm, I'm not sure what. Johnson is upset. He's upset sure about he's something. A, I don't know what he it wanted is. The, he wanted the timeout earlier. I don't know, but Maxi went for the ball. He fell down. Did you see, did you see contact on I that? I saw have there incidental been a foul? contact. I don't know contact. if there should have been a foul call on that. There wasn't. Maxi tried to get it, couldn't get it. Bro comes out of there with it. Right, and the clock doesn't start until Bro receives it. And when and he maybe did, that's he what was, he was like 70 feet away from maybe the Maybe that's what he was upset about, that the clock started too soon maybe. But really only two seconds went off the clock. Maybe he was calling timeout right away, and he thought it should be not two seconds off the clock. I'm not sure, but Coach Johnson was upset. It's either he wanted to call timeout and it didn't happen, or... Somebody might have started the clock when As the it ball was in the air or something. Or something yeah. Maybe while the ball was in the air. It's a it possibility. No, you're right. It touches a player who's in bounds. It has to be touched before it starts. And perhaps it might have started a, a split second soon. But the referees are not making any adjustments to the time. We do know this. There's a 64-63 score. Bridgepoint will have the ball. And, you know, what's interesting, just a, a, couple, a minute or so ago, we were... Looking at the improbability of all this, certainly they had to make a foul and do something, but they didn't even have to worry about that. They get the ball with no free throws attempted from from the Bryan uh, Vikings. They get the ball. They're going to mark. They're going to have the ball here in their front court. Let's see. Hold on here. Well, he did. I think move up into across the mid court stripe. Guess what that scratch when they. So they have plenty of time to get a shot off. Ford comes off a of pit to the baseline. He's going to shoot a 20-footer. Good! At the buzzer! Oh, my goodness! What a shot! T.J. Ford! Oh, my goodness! For about 20 feet out, 18 feet out, right baseline, and he puts it in. Holy cow! What a play. Roger, just a couple of moments ago, we said it had to be an improbable vi uh, finish to this game, and it was. What a finish. Ford ends up with 31 points on that last shot. What a play. Roger, you got something to say, I know. What a, I, what I got ending. nothing to say other than thank you, TJ, and uh, happy new year to uh, people who root for Rich Point. I mean, uh, Maybe this will give them some extra confidence in those tough district games because it's going to be a, a tough district wow. race in 26A. What a, it was a great game. And you never say die, do you? The, but Rich Point, twice today, they looked like they were not going to be able to win. And this one was a slightly different game than this morning. But boy, oh boy, what, who would have thought that would happen? And... The, the defense was actually pretty good on that last play. He just made the shot. I mean, well, it was a the, good shot. And hats off to the Bryan Vikings, uh, all eight of them. That's all they had in uniform today, and they fought hard. Yeah, I don't think they were. I don't think they, they definitely didn't have their full roster here. Now, whether it's hard to know who the people who are missing, and now the Panthers are going to get that first place trophy in the silver bracket, and the guy who's going to grab that trophy is the MVP of this ball game, T.J. Ford Jr. It's a silver bracket, but it's a gold basketball <laughs> on top of that pedestal there. Yeah, and you got to believe this has got to help the Rich Point because, uh, as you said, you got some tough district games ahead, and this kind of stuff can give you some confidence going in. All right. Well, this particular broadcast, uh, full disclosure here. We wanted to bring it to everyone live. We've had all kinds of technical problems, but it'll be worth listening on the podcast to hear that thrilling shot by TJ Ford that beat the buzzer by a, a second, maybe. And uh, Ridge Point is going to get on that bus and go back to the hard scrabble streets of Siena. Happy 
They win three out of four. They won a triple overtime game yesterday against Cinco Ranch, a possible playoff opponent. And they had a comeback from 15 points down. Actually, the biggest lead was 17, wasn't it? I was thinking it was, yeah, it might have been 17 or 18, yeah. And that was against uh, Westfield this morning. And then they win this one in overtime. The only loss that they had was to Beaumont Westbrook, and that was after they had played triple overtime earlier. So good job, Panthers, and uh, looking good as we start the resumption of district games. And that will happen on Tuesday, January the 3rd. We don't know which game we're going to do that week, but we'll do something. Anything else you want to say, Patrick? Congratulations to the Panthers. Great job and a great finish. And, Roger, thank you for uh, letting me be part of this. Again, you're always so gracious, and you've helped me out so much. Thank you for letting me do this. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, – getting warm as we walk outside yes i i don't know if it'll be warmer outside or inside but once we get in the car and turn on turn on the heater we'll be all well, right we'll see you uh with a double header from austin tomorrow roger oh that's right so austin bulldog girls at 12 noon or thereabouts taking on south houston the trojan girls and then we'll have the game right after that the austin boys taking on the randall lions the brand new school out of lamar consolidated ISD. So, for Patrick Kinnick, Merle Bertrand, Suna Venkat, the lovely and talented Victor Mora, everyone on the VibeFortMen.com team, thank you for listening to this great podcast. 65-64, the Panthers win it over the Bryan Vikings in overtime, and they capture the championship trophy for the silver bracket of this tournament here in Baytown. Happy New Year to everybody. Join us tomorrow for Austin, but if we don't, we'll talk to you in 2023. This is VibeFortBend.com. I'm Roger Smith, and I love you.